Uh, as a farmer, do you know how to get rid of beavers? I'm all ears. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of all of them or my pond would go away, but I got way more than I need. I guarantee you. Yeah. Um, these uh, videos I'm taking, this is on behalf of uh, a little topic called Laos Area Knowledge Exchange. They'll be on YouTube in a few days. And that's pretty much the whole thing, just what you said. Uh, and I'm here primarily for Walled Watershed Coalition for the Future Little Future by Pondable River Systems. I have three items for that. One is this is related to water quality and water supply. It's specifically related to your goal of number seven protect. And uh, number three, private property rights. It's that stable trail proposed natural gas pipeline, which many of you have heard of, some of you may not. It would run through Brooks and Lowndes counties and on down into Florida. It's supposed to be a yard wide, which is way huger than anything else, like nine times more gas than the usual 10 inch pipeline. It would require a 100 foot right of way. It would go under the Wipagoochee River twice, once in Georgia and once in Florida. And for no benefit whatever to Georgia. The EPA. U.S. EPA has filed a number of questions on this, including start, starting with need. Why does Florida need this? It's a sunshine state, and why not uh, solar? And environmental effects. Uh, all the environmental effects they question, the same questions would apply in Georgia equally as well as in Florida. The uh, Florida, the, the uh, Swan River Water Management District also filed a series of questions and they brought up things such as uh, this pipeline, if it's built, it has to be tested. Where is the test water going to come from? Where is the water after the test going to go? The water that's gone through a pipeline that had what in it? I mean, that's part of the question. What's going to come out of there? And if it comes, you know, it's going to come from the aquifer or the rivers, and it's going to go back into the groundwater. Um, <coughs> Walls Watershed Coalition was the first organization to file as an intervener for this pipeline, which actually formally you can't do until it enters the formal permitting stage. The organization to file any comments with is FERC.gov, or that's Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC. The docket number is PF for preliminary filing, PF 14-1. Uh, other watershed groups have taken a role in this. Uh, our Swanee, uh, our Santa Fe River in Florida has been opposed to it since the beginning. Uh, Flint River Keeper, Chattahoochee River Keeper are helping funding an expert witness for Greenwald to file comments. I know this isn't what you're currently meeting about here, but I would suggest that this organization has specifically as the equivalent of the Swanee River Water Management District for Georgia might consider filing some comments. That's my first comment. Number two topic is Walls Watershed Coalition. This is related to your uh, data info goal and your number 13 measurements and sharing, also uh, protecting the enhance number eight in your vision station. Um, Lowndes County, Lowndes County Commission, in its infinite wisdom, closed the road that was the only access to the Atlanta Wild River in Lowndes County. As Walls and a number of other people oppose that and propose that they're going to do that to form a park and put a boat ramp on the Alapa River. Miles County actually agreed to do that and put a line on it and there's lost uh, ballot for that. So they have the money, they're supposed to be doing it. Walls is going to try to follow up with that and help them have the perfect facilities, plus try to get implemented river trails. Uh, on the Wapaha and on the Wipicoochee, not just in Lowndes County, that would be silly, but in all the adjoining counties, Eccles, Lanier, Barron, Cook, Tift, Brooks, and so forth. Preferably connecting with the water trails that are already on the Wapaha, Wipicoochee, and Florida. And I hope that would be something that many of you would be in favor of and help bring people to the rivers, pay attention to these issues. And as part of the water trails uh, with you know, walls, would like to recommend that anybody that goes on the rivers you know, report back on the water levels. Uh, we'll try to promote water quality testing, preferably in conjunction with 
Garden City, for example. Uh, try to get people to know uh, riparian buffers where they are, where they aren't. And uh, invasive species is a big thing to try to do. Uh, I don't know if you know about the invasive species center at UGA and Tifton. But anyway, there is one. Uh, there are for the whole country. They also have a uh, smartphone app where you can actually report right where you are on the river or on the land. So we're going to try to promote that. I hope that's something that people in the room would like to you know, see that and maybe even help with. Any contacts you have, any suggestions, um, we're all yours. Uh, number three. Several people have brought to our attention uh, the question of who owns um, waters that you find on the land if you dam the creek, is that state waters? If you drill a well or dig a pit and water goes into it, is that state waters? For developers, this is an issue because uh, there seem to be varying standards of enforcement for that sort of thing. Who has to put in silt fences, who doesn't? And certain counties who shall remain nameless seem to think that they aren't covered by the state regulations on this. And uh, any pointers that we could get to what really are the laws that control this kind of thing and who would be, you know, are counties really exempt? Uh, that would be very interesting. That's what I did. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments?